Some of you guys are newer to my channel, other of you guys have followed me since day one, and I thank and love you all for that. Whether you are a newer or older subscriber, whether you are my internet friend or my friend in real life, family, whoever you are that is watching, I do want to thank you. And maybe you're watching this for yourself, maybe you're just watching out of curiosity, or maybe you're watching because you want to help someone else and give them advice. I don't know why it has taken me as long as it's taken me to film this video. In the last give or take two years, this has probably been my most or highest requested video to do. And I do apologize for how long it's been or how long it's taken me to do this video or these type of videos. But I do want this to be a new part of my channel and I do want to introduce it as its own playlist and its own section that I am going to be continuing and keeping up with just as much as I am with the makeup or fashion or other parts of my channel that I already established. I do want to thank you guys for being so patient with me and understanding because not everyone has been. I've had people leave comments telling me that they either have or are going to unsubscribe simply because I have not posted this video. And that to me, that was actually really upsetting because I dedicate my time, my life really, to you guys. I do this for you. I know what I did. I know how to do what I did. I, I know how to do what I do. I don't do videos to reteach myself or to tell myself about it. <laughs> I do these videos for you guys. And yes, I read every single comment and I take everything that you guys have to say, whether it's positive or negative, into consideration. With that said, it really upset me because this video, this part of my life, this change was huge for me. Not only physically, obviously my body has changed, but mentally and physically it was a huge change in my life and <laughs> one video is not going to be enough. I'm taking it very seriously and I am separating it into its own playlist. So for example, the story type ones like this one, the eating section, the workout section, it's all going to be different because I can't fit everything in one video. And trust me, if it was that easy, I would have already done it. It took me so long to do this video because, I mean, it's terrible to say, but there were times where I was just embarrassed. <sighs> I shouldn't be upset because I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of what I did and what I put myself through. It was not easy. <laughs> I had to change my lifestyle from beginning to end. Everything I did, I changed. And I did it for the better. I did it for myself and I did it to be healthier. But not only did I change what I actually did, I had to change my mentality. I had to change what I told myself every day and how I looked at myself in the mirror and how I looked at food or how I looked at like exercises, working out, the gym, everything changed. And you have to do that because you can't just start eating healthy and not working out and you can't just start working out but still eat like shit like it has to be a balance and that's so important and I it took me so long to figure that out and I don't know why I guess you just see someone else and just think they're made that way or it's just genetics and this is just how I'm gonna be that's not true you don't have to be the way you are you can change I debated filming my journey and my weight loss journey as it was happening because I didn't want any influence. I didn't want any negative influence, I should say. I did not want to lose sight of my goals. I didn't want to lose motivation or at the time what was motivating for me. My motivation actually continued knowing that this series was going to happen and that I would eventually get this far. I had so many people commenting on my journey the past few years asking, what's your secret? What do you do? How'd you do it? How are you doing it? But honestly, there was no secret. There's no fancy way to lose weight. And the other flip side is there's no one size fits all lifestyle or routine that's gonna work for everyone. So what I did may not work for you. At the end of the day, it comes down to you. You are your own problem. You are your own solution. No one can make changes for you. Sure, you can get a trainer, a nutritionist, X, Y, and Z, but they can't actually change you. You're gonna have to do it for yourself. 
They can give you advice, they can make you a meal plan, they can give you workouts to do, but they can't hold your hand and drag you to the gym every day, and they can't force feed you carrots, can they? One day, a few years ago, I woke up and something literally clicked. I told myself no more excuses, you're gonna do this. You're gonna push yourself to your limit, you're going to be your own inspiration, you're gonna do this for you. And you need to tell yourself that every single day. Again, no one can do it for you. You have to change your mentality. From this day on, you can no longer tell yourself, I can't. Got it? You have to change your attitude and it has to be positive and you have to love yourself and push yourself. You have to change your negative attitude to I can and I will. It starts mentally. Like I said, I woke up one day and my attitude just changed. It was positive, it was better. When you change your mentality, you're gonna change physically. You have to surround yourself with a positive environment and have a positive attitude. You have to take each day as it is and you have to focus on your goals. Healthy, realistic goals. If you want to lose weight, give yourself a healthy, realistic time frame. If you want to build more muscle mass or tone or lean out, give yourself a realistic goal. I didn't expect to one day look like a Victoria's Secret model. That's not going to happen for me. I'm 5'3". I'm not going to suddenly lose weight and then like string bean and grow out like super tall, like runway. No, it's not going to happen. But can I have a healthier lifestyle? Can I lose fat and turn that into muscle? Yeah, that was my goal. I used photos and clothing as my like goals or progress, I guess, as like a check-in. I didn't use a scale. It made me crazy. Numbers make me crazy. And then they just make me negative. If I gained a pound or whatever, I would feel terrible about myself. And really, at the end of the day, muscle outweighs fat. You have to understand that. So when you think about losing weight as well as toning like I was or do, the number on the scale isn't always going to reflect how you actually look or feel. It also just shouldn't define you anyway. Sure, you can use it as a healthy way to check in now and then, once a week, once a month. But really, however your clothes fit, however you feel about yourself and however you look in photos, those are all going to outweigh what the number on the scale says. I feel like I'm throwing a ton of information at you guys at once, so maybe take notes, but I just have so much to tell you guys, and like I said, I waited so long. It was just like a constant struggle figuring out how I'm going to do this, and then today I just realized if you don't, you're not going to, and I'm just, I have word vomit because I just have so many things that I want to tell you, so just bear with me. <laughs> Because anything I don't put in this video will be in an upcoming video and it won't take two years to get to. <laughs> Something that really works for me is balance. Holding yourself accountable and being aware of your choices, especially when it comes to eating habits. So for me, personally, the gym wasn't and isn't an issue. I actually love going to the gym. I feel like it's a great way to relieve stress and I just enjoy it. So for me, that wasn't the struggle. I know for some people, they hate it, but you're going to be different than everyone else. You have to embrace what you're good at and what you do like and you're gonna have to learn how to deal with the parts that you don't like and how to make it work. My problem was my eating habits and other choices that I was making. At the end of the day, looking back, I f honestly feel I was just extremely uneducated. I didn't understand, I didn't know how to read a label, I didn't know what any of those things meant and I was eating more so out of pleasure than treating food as something more meaningful. Food now to me is fuel. When I think of food now, I think of it as fuel. I think of it as energy. I think of it as building muscle and healing. I also think of it as something that you should enjoy thoroughly. You should focus on. For example, I don't mindlessly eat in front of the TV because then I'm just going to overeat and I'm not even enjoying what I'm eating at that point. I eat very slowly, like I focus on what I'm eating. If you guys are my friends or family and you've eaten with me then you know. I'm always like the last one to finish and I never finish everything on my plate. One meal, like if we go to a restaurant or something, can turn into four for me. But that's because I eat slow, I take my time eating and I fill up faster. So everyone that inhales their food, stop that. Take the time to actually enjoy your meal. Something else that really worked for me was 
realizing you're not a dog. Do not reward yourself with food, but don't punish yourself with it either. Don't think, oh yeah, I ate super healthy all week. Now I can eat a whole box of Oreos. No, it doesn't work that way. We're all guilty of having really good days and really bad days. I'm by no means a super healthy, perfect eater. Ask my friends. I'm not at all. <laughs> but compared to who I used to be and what I used to do, I eat a lot smarter and I'm more aware of what I'm putting into my body. You have to balance the good with the bad. You can still eat the shit food, just don't eat the whole box. <laughs> Read serving sizes. Read serving sizes. Because, for example, Pop-Tarts, great example. They put two Pop-Tarts in one package, but if you read the serving size, one Pop-Tart is a serving. Does anyone ever not eat both Pop-Tarts? <laughs> A lot of brands are guilty of this. They will pre-package items together and people think that means it's a serving. It's not. Read labels. Another example is something may say low fat, no fat, low calorie. Okay, great. Those sound exciting and they sound healthy, right? Well, if you read the back of the label where it's lacking in one thing, it's spiking something else like nine times out of ten which sometimes might even be worse. Take the extra time when you're grocery shopping or when you go out to eat to know what you're buying or know what you're eating. Sometimes the option you might think is healthier may not be. You only get one body, so you might as well treat it as best as you can, inside and outside, mentally and physically. You have to take care of yourself as a whole because if you just focus on one thing, everything else is gonna fall. So that just goes back with the whole like balancing act. I know it's hard to do, trust me, I know. I did it, <laughs> slash do it. But you have to if you wanna make these life choices and live a healthier lifestyle. I know the struggle. I lost 40 pounds. So, I still, it doesn't, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It doesn't even seem real to me at this point. So, for those of you who have known me or followed me since the beginning, then you watched the whole transformation. I began college at 125 pounds. I was, I guess, average built. I wasn't muscular by any means. I wasn't overweight either. To give you a better idea, I'll also have photos in here to show you or to compare, but I didn't really think about my body that much. I, I won't say I took care of it, but I won't say I was careless. I was sort of mutual. It just wasn't a priority for me. I ate what was convenient and I didn't really think about what I was eating. As far as exercise goes, I would maybe go on the treadmill. Uh, the elliptical, just random cardio here and there, nothing legitimate, no routine. So within a year and a half-ish, while in college, I gained all the weight. So I went from 120 to 150 and it's so strange but it's almost like I didn't even notice. Well I say that but at the same time it was more like denial or I don't know. I don't know if it was somewhere between being naive or just denial and not wanting to think about it or do anything or accept it but I was eating like shit. I was eating fast food, I was sleeping all the time, I wasn't getting exercise, I wasn't treating my body the way I should. Basically all I cared about the time was getting good grades and partying. I had a great time in college, I won't lie, I loved college. I hated high school. I didn't have a ton of friends in high school and I was pretty quiet. 
And then when I went to college, I kind of came out of my shell and I made a lot of friends. I did a lot of things. I was outside of my comfort zone. And while doing so, I grew confident, which is also strange. It, I grew like a sense of comfortability. Is that a word? I grew comfortable. So to me, that was confident. I was outgoing. I was fun. I did all these things, but I also didn't treat my body or my mind very well. Again, I'm not really sure if I want to say it was just being naive or just super uneducated, or if I just didn't want to do it and I didn't acknowledge how I looked or how I felt. Um, but towards the end of my college career, I had heard people talking behind my back and also a few people finally said something to my face. Um, they used hurtful words and called me fat and other words or sayings similar to that. And they were hurtful. And even the guy I was seeing at the time, people are so mean. I had stopped seeing a guy and he had told me that I was an embarrassment and said to me, do you honestly think that I want to be with you? Look at you, you're fat. So not only are some of my friends, friends at the time talking about me, but also the guy who I was with at the time also was talking about me slash said something to my face. So it kind of all just happened at one time or around the similar time. So I stopped and thought about it. And yeah, I kind of analyzed myself and looked at photos and I grew extremely self-conscious and kind of finally realized how much weight I did gain and how I felt about myself. They had said things about me that I knew were sort of somewhat true. They had said I was fat, which, yes, I gained weight. Was I fat? No. I had fat, but I wasn't fat. That does not define me. That does not define you. It doesn't define anyone. And to those of you who did talk about me, <laughs> yes, I know who you are and what you said because no one listens to you talk shit and then doesn't tell them. Trust me. I want to thank you for being motivation for me because I will never, ever forget who you are and what you said. And I want to thank you for being the small spark of inspiration for me. You sparked a fuse. You motivated me, and I want to thank you. Do I ever want to talk to you again? No. <laughs> and it's actually funny because the guy I was seeing at that time came back like a year later and tried to holla back and nah, 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 nah. Thanks, but no thanks. You're funny. My weight gain or fat did not define me, and it shouldn't define you. It did make me sluggish and tired and self-conscious and depressed, but it didn't define me. Ultimately, I wasn't happy with who I became as far as my appearance. I was the same person on the inside. I just didn't like who I saw in the mirror. I realized things needed to change, so I did that. I researched my ass off trying to figure out what I needed to do. I would read blogs. I would uh, read, what is it, bodybuilding.com. I would try to learn as much as I could about food and nutrition and exercise, working out. I'm 5'3". I was 150 pounds at the time. I'm 5'3", and now I'm 113. And I'm extremely proud of myself. Because there were days I just did not want to do it. <laughs> you have to be aware every day of what you're doing, and you have to make the healthier choice every day. I do have some fun show and tell. So after my original inspiration of honestly just hated how I felt and things that people were saying about me, which is so, it's sad because people say they don't care. I said I didn't care when they said it to me, but it hurt really bad. But it's what it took and it worked. So along the way, I needed more motivation to continue on and that became myself. You have to be your own motivation. 
And when you see results, trust me, it is motivating. Another example is I made a motivation board. So I want to show you guys that because I've never showed it to really many people at all. I made a weight loss chart. So as you can see, I have to add on. So literally all I did was tape paper, which you can make it way prettier than mine. Mine looks so ghetto. But I've had this since 2013. I have the feels because I remember the moment I made this. I'm sorry I'm so emotional in this video. It's just it's so emotional. All right. So I wrote a little motivating quote at the top. You can do whatever you want. Uh, it says, do it for you. You can, can do it. Start weight. Well, it's 150. So each time I reach a new goal or I lost more weight, I would X out the number. So you kind of get like a countdown going on. My original goal was 130 at the time. I didn't even think that was going to be possible, literally. I struggled in the beginning so hard because I was figuring everything out and changing everything at once. Diet, exercise, lifestyle. I also um, highlight every fifth pound to kind of be like a reminder of where I was and how much farther I had to go. So there's like different things you can do to decorate or give yourself little motivation like that. So honestly, the first 10 pounds took a little while because I was, again, trying to figure out what I was doing. Once I reached 139, the weight seemed to kind of just go pretty fast right after that because I got my routine down. I knew what I was doing. It became easier and it was daily for me. So I was 139 pounds February 9th, 2014. I then hit my 133 mark at March 8th. I hit 129 April 12th. So I put the dates on when I would weigh myself. As you can see, it was a monthly weigh-in for me then. I was really trying to not be like super anal about the numbers on the scale. Uh, May 24th, I hit 124 pounds. July 1st, again, this is 2014, I hit 122 pounds. September, I hit my first major goal, which was to be back what I was when I went into college, which was 120 pounds. I about shit myself. It took me so long to lose weight in between this time period or this time frame because I guess I hit a plateau. I was super religious with my routine at the time. Like, no days off. I was in it to win it. And I guess I hit a plateau because I was doing the same thing every day for so long. So once I hit that, I started to switch up again. Um, in December, December 16th, I reached 119. So in that time frame, it took a little bit to even lose one pound, but I was comfortable at 120. I was celebrating. I was excited. I thought I could do anything. <laughs> and I was really focused not only on losing weight, but on weight training and lifting weights. So again, the number thing to me wasn't everything and isn't everything. You have to realize that. I was my most muscular there. I went from Fatty McFatterson, whatever else they called me, just super muscular. Everyone was telling me how good I looked. That felt great. That, <laughs> that was such a good feeling. <laughs> and it still is, of course. I mean, when people started to notice my body had changed for the better, or, oh, there's a hair, <laughs> or um, in a more positive way, that was the best feeling. Of course, when someone says something nice now, of course that feels good or whatever, but at that time, in that moment in my life, 
you guys will never know how much that meant to me when you would just simply leave a nice comment or say something in real life to my face. So continuing on, July 2015, I went to 118. I guess I just kind of stayed focused in this time frame. Um, my next one says March 15, 2016. I got to 116. My second goal after 120 was 115. And that was May 9th, 2016. Again, my goals changed throughout. The number changed as well as my routine. I was focused on losing weight, then I focused on weight training, kind of went back and forth. Um, June 2nd, I hit 113. And that was a huge moment for me. When I reached these numbers, my mentality was different. Still positive, but different in my routine and eating. These are all different and they're all going to change your achievements. I also took progress photos. So once a month, I would take a photo. I would try to take the photo in the same room, even wearing the same thing if I could, but just to get the best results that I could see. So the photos were extremely motivating to me because when I looked in the mirror daily, I still saw the 150 pound version of me, which is weird because I know I don't weigh that, but sometimes I still see that. And it, again, it's, it's really a constant struggle with yourself and it's a mental thing, but sometimes I still have that feeling and the photos are just a good reminder and a good comparison to see how far you've come. I also had a reward sheet here, so my reward was not food. I used food again as fuel and I balanced what I was eating, so yeah, I'll still eat ice cream and cookies and cake. I just won't eat the whole thing of it this time. I just eat smaller portions and better options. Same with like when I'm cooking or baking, I won't use a pound of sugar, I'll use something else like avocado or Greek yogurt or applesauce as sweetener. You know, like better options. Anyways, I had a reward sheet, so this says treat yourself with my rewards and once I hit 130 pounds, my reward was new gym clothes. So I spent more than I probably should have on brand name gym clothes and shoes because I want to be looking all fly and shit in the gym. When you look good, you feel good and vice versa. And I just needed new clothes because my other clothes were super baggy. So. 1.30, that's when I treat myself to a huge shopping spree for gym clothes. When I reached 125, my goal was to start getting my lips done. That was another huge thing that I was very self-conscious about and I wanted to change. I was tired of having to overline them and eating my makeup, basically. For what I do and what I love doing, which is makeup, I wanted a bigger canvas, so that's why I ended up doing them. We can do a whole nother video on that if that's something that you guys are interested in. But I started to get them done. So that was exciting. Uh, when I hit 120, I did another shopping spree. This time of swimsuits because by then it was summer, no suits fit me, and it just had to be done. So what better time than to reward yourself for a goal? When I hit 115, I wrote confidence and achievement. So I didn't have like a legit materialistic goal for that one. It was just kind of just realizing how far you've come and almost a sense of relief. That's your reward. And then finally maintaining for a year. My reward for that, I'm actually not going to show you because that reward in itself is a whole nother video, which is coming up soon. So yeah, keep your eyes open for that if you're interested. But those are little things that I would do to treat myself or reward myself and to continue motivating myself, pushing myself, really. Girl, you want those new shoes? Drop them, give me 50. You want X, Y, and Z? Lose this much weight or tone up this much. Those are great ways to keep yourself in check. These were my shorts when I weighed my most and they were so tight on me. <sighs> I really should have gotten a bigger size, but I was just too embarrassed or to go any bigger. But these were size 29. My bra size at the time of 150 
was a 34 triple D. Here's another pair of shorts that I was wearing that were also still too small, just as another example. But I still have these because they still motivate me. This shirt I could not button. It was way too small for me. Size large. Forever 21 button-up shirt. I wore all the time just because I felt like it covered me enough. But these are all so baggy on me now and it's so exciting. So here I am trying on the old pair of shorts. You can see here they're way too big for me now, but just as an example, I can even roll them over. And here is again the old pair of shorts that were too tight on me and my current shorts over top to give you a comparison you guys know it's real when the hair goes up i also want to remind you you're allowed to love yourself you're allowed to be proud of yourself that's not vain there's a difference between confidence and vanity and i feel a lot of people confuse the two and try and make other people feel guilty about loving themselves. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Let someone love themselves for who they are. And I do also want to say, if you're 150 pounds, I don't care what your weight is. For me, for my figure, my stats, it was uncomfortable for me. That might be your ideal weight. Do not base your numbers off my numbers. I just want to throw that out there. They're just an example. I'm short, I'm 5'3", my frame is smaller, so that much weight on my body was a lot more than I was happy with. I do not want anyone to feel discouraged because I threw out those numbers. That's not the point. But if weight loss, if muscle toning, muscle gaining, feeling good about yourself, let's say that. If feeling good about yourself is a goal for you or something that you've been struggling with, you can do it. I did it. And you can do it. Sure, there's still things about myself I don't love. I continue to work on myself every day. I compare myself to no one else besides who I was yesterday. You will live a lot better life if you do the same. Do not go to the gym and compare yourself to Becky A, B, C, and D. Because you're not Becky. You'll never be exactly as someone else. And that's what makes you you. And that's beautiful. That's unique. That's awesome. Embrace it. Your only goal should be to be the best version of yourself. To your standards, not anyone else's. If you want something bad enough, you'll do it. You will do everything you have to do to do it. Do not give up. There will be tough days. Trust me. <laughs> Some days you are not going to want to go to the gym. You're not going to want to eat healthy. You're going to feel discouraged and that's okay. You're allowed to have those days. Have a 10 second pity party, back to your routine, and do what you have to do for you. Four months from now, six months from now, a year from now, you're gonna look back and you're gonna thank yourself and you're gonna be so happy with the choices you made. I have so much more I wanna talk to you guys about, but this video is already super long. So hopefully the tips and advice and background on my story was helpful for some of you and a good insight to upcoming playlists or videos that I have planned for you guys that have to do with this topic. I'm so excited to start them and to post them to get your feedback and to hopefully help some of you who either are struggling or have struggled because I know how you feel. I got you fam. So whatever questions you guys have for me that you want me to touch base on in the next video or anything specific that you want to see at all, please comment below and let me know. If you're excited for this playlist to begin or these type of videos, give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for watching.